Hi, I'm Jedi Hurricane Bigfoot Howie in, uh, at CIA headquarters, the Chehalis Interaction Area. And uh, last night we had, uh, it was kind of day two, but that's when everyone got there, so in a way it was day one. But we sat down here in CIA and it was a great light show. Orbs all over the place. We heard some footfall. Uh, a lot of people even saw some good shimmering images really close. I didn't quite make out the shimmering images, but the orbs were close. A lot of interactions going on, and I mean, it was like a fireworks display for a long time. Just saw more, more, just really maybe even going to my soya at my soya days, it might be the greatest light display that I've seen in my Bigfoot, uh, my, my short but hopefully long Bigfoot life and Bigfoot excursions that I've been uh, going on. And I guess let's, let's go back a little bit. And I started going out with Dr. J in 2009 into 2010, kind of old school approaches, finding foot tracks, footprints, hearing them walking around, which even to this day is one of the most memorizing part of Bigfooting, hearing the footfall and them walking around and you know coming in on you while you're in there in complete darkness, which is just awesome. But the world really opened up in 2011 when I went to visit Doc and Cynthia in the Green Belt. Is it Green Belt? In the Green Belt over there near Mount Rainier National Park, over in the Seattle area, where we're sitting there on one of our first complete dark night sets with no lights, even though we have them, we weren't turning it on. And Bigfoots are walking, you kind of see an image or a shimmering image. We lit them up the first time and, and I thought Bigfoot was gonna be standing 10 feet in front of my face and there was nothing there. I was like, what is going on? And this is after now about a good 30, 40 minutes of hearing footfall at the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, all around us, swarming around us, throwing pebbles right near us, kind of landing. I'm like, wow, just you know, dropping little pebbles by us, saying, hey, we're here. A little, little while after the first time, when the, and you're talking about nighttime, where you could hear a pin drop. Bam, 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 just like, like, like a locomotive train was running at you. But then, later on, Bigfoot is running at us again. You know, it's dark out. You know, you're hearing them in the footfall. I'm like, Doc, Doc, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Cynthia was in the middle of me, then it was Doc over here. We all stood up as he was getting within feet. And once again, I can't, I can't tell you to this day that he bumped into Dr. J, but I can tell you that he was close enough that it happened. It supposedly hit him, or did hit him, turned him around, but this thing was so close. Like when you're on the expressway and a truck drives by and you, that inertia and the rocks and everything go flying at you, this is what exactly happened. The inertia, things got thrown. You could feel his presence run by, and he was running like, I mean, bam, 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 the dead of night, just super loud. And that was, I thought, it's over. I caught lightning in a jar just now. My big footing, I don't need to ever come in the woods again. Over the next couple years, Doc and Cynthia and I, we were talking to some shows. We got flown around here, meet up here, talk about some shows. Maybe did a couple day sets actually, just showing production crews. But then it was 2014, probably my longest gap in my big footing history so far. Came out, I think, overlap of August, September of 2014. Went over to SOA. We were trying to do some experiments with playing movies, having battery problems. But in 2014, first two nights, conditions were actually really good. Uh, warm, not too windy. And then really the only thing that took place was footfall. Got in, you know, we had a little flat out area on top of Soa. Then the trees come up to the, up to the line. Really, they stayed in that perimeter here in great footfall. But that time is kind of background noise. I've been doing this for a few years now, but it's still awesome. Last night comes up in Soa 2014. And... Night starts off like all the other ones. Weather was really good. Was, I think it was one of the warmer nights. Or it might have been the colder. I forgot. I think I actually had a hoodie on that night. So maybe it was a, a, one of the cooler nights, actually. And we're hearing some footfall. Doc says, Howie, I see a junior Sasquatch kind of kneel down over there by the, about the 11.30, 11 o'clock position. I kind of see some glow. And then off to the uh, uh, 1 o'clock position, but really close where the trees are. He's like, you see that, Howie? I'm like, well, like what? And then I'm like... Wow. I three I see three pairs of green eyes, one winking at me. They would like kind of turn their head. You'd only see one eye. Doc was walking around playing his music, and when you kind of go near them, they would kind of back off or disappear. And then when Doc would get out of the way, the green energy would kind of come back, and then the eyes would come back, and there they are still looking at me. I'm just like, they're probably a good 15, maybe 20 feet away, or maybe even closer. And I'm just like, this is freaking surreal. So passive, it's awesome. And then with a few minutes after that, one of them illuminates his face for about a 1-1,000, 2-1,000, about a 4 to 5,000 count. Shows me his face. 
I'm like, wow, this is awesome. I now officially can say I have seen, seen a Bigfoot, not a shimmering image, not some I need to think clogged, I saw a Bigfoot. And then within a few minutes after that, I'm walking around, you know, kind of admiring and looking, and I feel a tug on my shirt pull me. And I'm like, Doc, I just felt, I just felt one pull on my shirt. And he's like, yeah, that happens to quite a few people out here. And then they continue to kind of pull my shirt. And then I start talking to them verbally. They can hear you, you know, telepathically, but I'm talking to them verbally. I said, will you pull my sleeve down? I'm holding my arm. And probably I say within 11 to 15 seconds, I start to feel my sleeve getting a little pressurized and sliding down a little bit. So now they are responding to my verbal commands. And this took place anywhere between 15 to 20 to maybe even 30 minutes. I'm walking around. They pulled on my hoodie again. Look, oh, they pulled on my hoodie where I leaned forward and was literally holding me up. That's the kind of force that they were controlling and using and showing me. So this wasn't just the wind going, oh, oh, wow, how are we looking at that? Look at that. No, they were responding to me verbally, holding onto my shirt. And it was awesome. They continued to do that. And literally at the end of it all, when I was telling them to play with my hoodie and they were doing that, and I was facing at that time, 12, the 9 o'clock position in SOA, my back was to the 3 o'clock. They were giving me a back rub for literally about a minute and a half. And I was just like, this is awesome. No one in the world, when I say I got a, a back rub from Bigfoot, yes, lock this guy up, put the straight jacket on him. And, and I get it. I get it. Because it doesn't make sense. It's crazy, but it's reality to me and a lot of other people in Bigfootology, in Bigfoot um, or whoever's been with Dr. J and Cynthia to his research areas, to SOA, to SOYA, and now to CIA. But let's go back now to SOYA for my first time in... August, late August of, of 2016, Doc has researched over the next two years since my last visit. I mean, he went from uh, he went from a senior member of the Jedi Council to yeah, to uh, to spirituality, Master Yoda on steroids. He knows everything now about the Squatches within reason that they that he's been taught, and he's telling me all kinds of stories about the the groups and everything else. And he told me about the Tricon, the Tricon, which is really the physical primate type of being brought down here from the aliens to help mine the earth of its resources years ago and the aliens left them here but they're still here now he told me about them after i had complete peace from 2014 in the forest I'd go anywhere in the world now and now here we are two years later and he's telling me about some being now that you know once in a while takes a couple bites out of humans i'm like okay i feel great now up in the middle you know mile eight mile drive up the mountain up here in soya you know, 5,500 feet elevation, and now i got to worry about my life once again, like, you know, a gray white shark is hunting me down. So it's nighttime. We all get in our cots. I'm up. People are snoring, sleeping, and within about an hour, I don't know who the last person was, they start snoring. So everyone in the camp now, except for me, is sleeping. As soon as that last person snored, it was in a 1-1,000, one, 2-1,000 one thousand count where I start hearing. I, to this day, it was just... Something was going down. It was like a locomotive. After hearing that, you know, an hour earlier, what was going on, I'm like, is there a bear? Is there a mountain lion here? Do I, do I need to wake somebody? So, it was so loud. And all of a sudden, I look up. And probably, I'm laying in the cot all the way down, probably 15 feet in front of me, there is a seven-foot Bigfoot looking right down at me with a smile, with a happiness. And I'm just, and I, and I, I'm not saying I might have been at peace if this was two years later, but after the Tracon talk an hour earlier, I'm just like, you know, I was freaking out internally and he knew it because before I could even, you know, bat another eye about a two second count, he was gone and he was gone because he was like, I don't want to give this guy, I put this poor guy a heart attack, you know, on, on, on one hour in day one of our trip and I want to have them to have to take him off the mountain. So he respected my fear and I appreciate that too. I learned later that was too cool. And I was telling him audio or, or mentally, telepathically, I know you, I know I'm freaking out. You know, I know, you know, I'm scared, but you know, please come back. So people got up about an hour later and I told him about the story and everything else. He started to come back in about within an hour later. I saw him as a gray figure. Couldn't see through him. He came in close and then just vaporized and was gone. And that was the closest I saw Tuqua the rest of the trip. He came in though for the next three to four hours. He would he would come in and cloak. He walk. I hear that. <laughs> he breathed, snorting within 15 feet in front of me. I'm like, you guys hear that? Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like I could touch him and like he was right, still right there. He was staying cloaked for, until at least 4:30 in the morning. I stayed up that night. And it was still awesome, him walking around for the footfall, breathing, you know, pretty much. I could tell that he was, like, just there hanging with us to communicate back and forth, even though he wasn't really responding in a way that, you know, hey, 
he's just there. You know, you saw me earlier, I'm still here. And that was awesome. The rest of the trip, though, yeah, I did see some some red six by six foamy, foggy, like apparitions of red energy. Really cool. And it was moving around. Doc saw it. And here I am, the present day in CIA, and still the light shows, everything going on, foot footprints, footfall, and we still have another night or two. And I'm looking forward to the awesomeness that this phenomena has brought to me. Just exponentially getting better and more interactive year and year as they educate us on what they're doing and Dr. J puts it in English to us what they're talking about and it just gets better day in and day out and that's really my my, my, my short story from uh, Hurricane Jedi Bigfoot Howie.